In a unique experiment that took years to complete, Dr. Calhoun used white mice to study population growth and its effects on individual behavior. The following is about a mice utopia that became a rodent hellhole. Complete with cannibalism in a race of mice known as the beautiful ones. In 1962, John B. Calhoun laid out the specifics of his mice utopia dystopia experiment in a paper called Population Density and Social Pathology. But Calhoun's obsession with the question of overpopulation leading to extinction didn't stop there. In 1972, he devised his 25th iteration of rodent housing with Universe 25, a 101 square inch tank or 2.5 meters enclosed by walls 54 inches high or 1.37 meters high. Each of the 16 walls had a stairwell soldered to it in the form of vertical mesh tunnels. Horizontal corridors opened off each stairwell, leading to nesting boxes, and there was an endless supply of food and clean water, as well as material to nest with. Moreover, the universe was regularly cleaned, and the temperature never deviated from 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It was a predator-free, all-you-can-eat buffet of life. A true utopia. Well, except for the prison-like structure itself. Out of this universe rose groups of mice known as the Beautiful Ones. Mice who retreated to their apartments to material meticulously groom themselves and gorge on food, while below them the masses were entangled in a clutch of violence. So where did it all go wrong? After four breeding pairs settled in their new digs, they began to reproduce. Every 60 days the population doubled, and soon the utopia began to sour. There was plenty of room, but mice crowded into certain eating and sleeping compartments, which led to overpopulation in these areas, resulting in some serious, aggressive behavior. The violence escalated so much that soon random acts of violence were perpetrated among the rodent population, with the majority of mice entering a kind of freakout mode, ceasing to engage in day-to-day -day activities like mating. And while some dealt with the population pressure by becoming antisocial and retreating to the corners, like the beautiful ones, others engaged in pansexual behavior with one another. Female mice withstood attacks and aggressive mating behavior, eventually abandoning their offspring, some of whom were attacked by their mothers or cannibalized by other mice, even though there was plenty of food to go around. In the 1970s, an era that was experiencing unprecedented population growth, Calhoun's findings seemed to support a doomsday scenario for humans. Books like Population Bomb and movies like Soylent Green all warned of an end to the human race through overpopulation. And the rodents' descent into cannibalistic madness seemed like a likely model. Except that Calhoun's experiment and the human model of life isn't exactly apples to apples. For the most part, we humans have agency, meaning that there isn't some organism larger than us scooping us up and forcing us to live in an enclosed tank from which there is no escape. And psychologist John Friedman presented the argument that it's not necessarily overpopulation that was the problem with Universe 25. Instead, it was the increased level of social interaction that drove the mice mad. Not to mention the fact that the mice born into Universe 25 didn't form the kinds of social bonds they normally would. The big bummer is that even when the population began to decrease, the mice weren't able to return to normal activities like mating. They simply died off. So besides inspiring paranoia in humans that we're all going to turn into pansexual cannibals when the population reaches a certain number, a couple of positive results came out of the experiment. First was the discovery that not all rodents went berserk. There were some who adapted, even thrived among the chaos. And Calhoun created 100 more versions of Universe 25 to draw out this trait, trying to create what he called high-velocity mice, with the hope that he could apply this rodent creativity to the human problems of population density. The second was the beloved film The Secret of Nim, which was originally a children's book about super intelligent rats escaping the National Institute of Mental Health. So what became of the beautiful ones? Calhoun removed a group of them and put them in an enclosure with fewer mice and more space, plus a lifetime of clean water and food. The expectation was that they would revert to normal behaviors. But the effects of societal collapse were irreversible, something called the behavioral sink, the point of no return. And Calhoun saw this with the beautiful ones, who continued to groom their day away, forever oblivious to one another. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Rats, like humans, are one of the most resilient mammal species on the planet. And while they've long been maligned for their disease vector shenanigans, these unlovable scamps don't get the respect they deserve. Yep. Regardless of how you feel about one of nature's most successful rodents, there's no denying that rats are as intelligent as they are reviled. They outsmart and escape 
laboratory experiments. They experience empathy, and they've successfully colonized every continent on Earth except for Antarctica. And they'll get there soon enough, I imagine. If you want to understand how nurture and nature play tug of war with our identities, all you have to do is look at the world of mice. In a new study from the University of Utah, mother mice who competed for mates in a promiscuous environment went on to have sexier sons.